Hi, we're in packet 5.2 and we are on page 7. So we just learned about a triangle. We said, hey, the two shorter sides have to be longer than the third side. They have to be longer than the, the longest side. Otherwise, I can't create a triangle, right? That's what we saw over here. So here we're going to look at how do I determine uh, the possible length of a third side. If I know two sides of a triangle, how do I know what the possible length is of that third side, right? So let's take a look over here. I have 14 and 22. I know these two sides. Well, I can make two uh, suppositions, right? I can assume that 22 is the longest side or it's not the longest side. There's one of those, one of those have to be true, right? So let's assume 22 is not the longest side, okay? So then it's one of the shortest sides, as is this, obviously, because it's shorter than 22. So if I add them up together, I get 14 plus 22 equals 36. Right? And I know that 36 has to be greater than the other side, the missing side, the side I'm going to call x. Right? So I know that x has to be less than 36. Right? That was my first supposition. That's assuming that 22 is, um, is not the biggest, the longest side. Okay? And this, 36, as you can see over here, is the sum of these two. So I have x is greater than, I'm sorry, x is less than the sum of those two. Okay, now let's assume that this is the longest. Okay, so this is the longest side, and this one is one of the shortest sides. So I know that the sum of the uh, two shortest sides has to be greater than the longest side. So I have something plus 14, whoops, something plus 14 has to be greater than 22. In other words, x, the something I'm looking for, has to be greater than 22 minus 14, which is, uh, which is 8 in this case. Right? So in other words, it has to be greater than the difference. Okay, so I can write that down in one uh, expression like this. X has to be greater than 8 and less than 36, right? Greater than 8 and less than 36. But what I noticed over here is that it's greater than the difference, right? And it is less than the sum. So that's going to be our rule over here. So X, the missing side, is going to be less than the sum and greater than the difference. Okay, so we can apply that rule every single time using the same logic. So here we have two numbers over here. So I know that x is going to be greater than the difference. Well, 11, you take the, the difference, the positive difference, right? So you take the largest one first. 11 minus 3 gives me 8, right? And it's going to be less than the sum. 11 plus 3 is 14. Right? And after we figured it out, oh, it becomes so easy now, um, now that we know the rule, right? Okay, so again, here x is greater than um, the difference. Okay, so the difference is 24 minus 7 is uh, 17, and it is less than the sum, and the sum is 31. Question number 15 says, if a triangle has lines 15 feet and 27 feet, check all the possible lengths for the third side, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write up my inequality, my statement over here. I'm going to say, well, whatever side is missing has to be greater than the difference, which is 12, and less than the sum, which is 30, 42. Okay, so I, I know it has to be between 12 and 42. So can it be 34? Well, yeah, it can be 34. Can it be 12? No, because it has to be strictly greater than 12. Okay, it's not greater than or equal to, right? Can it be 29? Yes, it can be 29. That falls within that statement. Can it be 18? Yes, 18 is greater than 12, less than 42. Can't be 43. Okay? Okay, stop the video now and try these questions over here on the side before continuing. Let's go to the next page. We're going to talk about ordering angles and ordering sides, right? So it says the angles of a triangle can be cut can be put in order by comparing the sides. And what we know is that the smallest side is always opposite the shortest, I'm sorry, the smallest angle is always opposite the shortest side. Okay? And the largest angle is always opposite the longest side. Right, that's, that's pretty logical, right? If I have the longest side over here, this side over here, this angle is going to be the largest angle, right? Because it has to open up wide enough to allow for this length of side, right? It has to be a wider angle to have a side opposite it that is longer. 
So if I were to order these over here, I'd say, well, the shortest one over here is going to be opposite the shortest side. So angle A is going to be the shortest, right? Then I have this side, which is opposite angle C. So angle C is going to be the next largest. And the largest angle over here is going to be that angle B because it's opposite the longest side. So that's ordered from least to greatest, the angles, okay? Well, the same thing applies the other way around, right? The sides of a triangle can be put into order by comparing the angles. What if I know the angles but not the sides? Can I order the sides, right, by relative length? Yes, I can. The shortest side is always opposite the smallest angle. The smallest angle. And the longest side is opposite the largest angle. Right? So if I were to look over here, right, one angle is missing, but by the triangle angle sum theorem, I can figure that out. 42 plus 103 is 145. 180 minus 145 is 35. So I can write that down. So which of the sides is going to be the, going to be the uh, least, so the shortest, from least to greatest? So which is the shortest? Well, it's opposite the smallest angle. So it's going to be side ED. Right? And then the next shortest will be opposite the next largest angle, which would be side DF. And the longest will be opposite this angle over here, so it's going to be EF. Okay, so that's how we can order sides and angles based on, you know, sides based on the relative size of the angles and angles based on the relative size of the sides. So let's try question number one over here. It says, order the angles from least to greatest. So I don't know what the angles are, but I do know the side lengths, so I can find the relative size of the angles without knowing their absolute measure, the real measure. I know their relative measure, how they size up comparatively. Okay, this is the shortest side, so this is going to be the smallest angle. Right? This is the next shortest side, so this is going to be the next smallest angle. And the largest angle is going to be opposite the longest side. Question number three says, order um, the angles from greatest to least. Oh, they're being tricky. We want to start with greatest now. Greatest to least. Well, I know that the greatest angle is opposite the longest side. So I have a side over here. This is the longest side. So this is going to be the greatest angle. And the next greatest is opposite this side over here. That's going to be B. And the smallest is going to be opposite the shortest side. So that's going to be D. Then it says, order the sides from least to greatest. Again, we have to read carefully from least to greatest now. And again, we know the angles over here. So we know the absolute value of the angles. We know what the real value is. The missing angle is just 180 minus these two. So I get 80 plus 8, 88. So that would be 92 over here. 92 and 88 is 180. So from least to greatest, well, the shortest side is going to be opposite the shortest angle. So it's going to be KL. And then this one, KJ. And then the longest one is going to be JL. Okay. And then number seven says, order the sides from greatest to least. So now we're going from greatest to least. Okay. So I'm starting with the greatest. I first have to find out what this angle is over here. 80 and 50 is 130, 136, 180 minus 136 is 44. So this is going to be my smallest angle. So it's opposite the shortest side. But I want to go greatest first. So let's start with greatest over here. So I'm going to start with XZ. Then the next greatest would be this one, YZ. And the last one would be YX. Okay, so stop the video now and try the questions 2, 4, 6, and 8. Now let's move on to the next page. And here we introduce a new theorem. We're going to call it the hinge theorem. A hinge is something that you have on a door. It's the metal uh, piece that connects the door to the door post. Um, and uh, so if you think of this as the door post, right, and this as the door, right, the door is swinging open like this. It swings open like that. Okay, that's what's going on. And this, B to C, that's the door opening. Okay, that's how wide the door is open. Okay, so again, this is going to be the post, this is going to be the door, and this is going to be the hinge in between, right? So let's write down, that's the hinge, right? That's why it's called the hinge theorem. And the hinge theorem basically says, if the measure of angle A, this angle, is greater than the measure of angle D, this angle over here, and the post on each door is the same length, and the door itself is the same length. So this side is congruent to that side, this side is congruent to that side. So the two sides surrounding the angle we're comparing are congruent, right? 
then I can say that um, BC, so this line segment over here is going to be greater than this line segment over here, right? I open the door wider, so the opening is greater over here than it is over here, okay? So what if, on the other hand, I know that the door opening over here is wider than over here? What can I tell? What can you tell me about the angles? Well, obviously, there, this angle is going to be greater than that, right? That's the converse. So if I know that this door opening is wider than that one, right? So this is greater than that. So this door was opened wider. And I know, don't forget, that this is congruent to this and this is congruent to this, right? This is my post. This is my door. Okay, they have to be congruent as well. So if I know that, if I know all that, then I know that the measure of angle A has to be greater than the measure of angle D. Okay? So again, it's called the hinge theorem um, because it acts like a hinge. Okay, so compare the sides um, and angles <clears throat> by filling in the blank with a, a greater than or le a less than or greater than symbol. So here we go. KL and PM. KL is this side over here. I want to compare it to this side over here, PM. Now again, I don't know their absolute value. I can't, I don't know their measure. I don't know how long they really are, but I still can compare them because I know about these angles over here. I know this angle here and I know this angle here. First of all, I know that this side is congruent to that side in line. I know that this side is congruent to this side in line. Right? You can see that. That's important because without that being true, then I couldn't use the hinge theorem. I can only use the hinge theorem if these two sides are congruent. Okay? And then I compare the angles. I see this angle is shorter than that angle. Is I'm sorry, this measure is less than that one. So this opposite side, the door opening, is going to be shorter than this one over here. So this one's shorter. So this is what I'm going to write down. Right? PM is less than KL. And we try over here. I'm comparing Wx and Xy. So Wx and Xy I want to compare. Okay, can I use the hinge theorem? Let's take a look over here. I know that this side, right, is congruent to this side, right? So what about, um, what is the surrounding side over here? So I have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Wx, Xy, Wx, Xy. So this is my door opening. So I look at this side in the middle. Well, this side is congruent unto itself, right? So I have side angle side as it were i need that these i need these sides to be congruent and this side to be congruent to itself to use the hinge theorem so i'm comparing this angle over here and they're being tricky over here i'm not comparing it with this angle over here i need to figure out what this angle over here is right so how do i figure that out well i know that this is 32 and this is 93 so that's 125 180 minus 125 is 55. So this angle over here is 55. Don't just assume it's 53. Don't assume that the triangles are congruent. We don't know that, right? This is 55 degrees. Okay, so since this side is the same as this, this is the same as itself by the reflexive property, then I can use the hinge theorem, and I can say that since this angle is less than this one, this side over here is going to be shorter than this side over here. Okay? Then we have question number five over here. It says... I want to compare the measures of angle D and angle H. Now I want to compare the measures of the angles. So let's look at angle D. I'm comparing this angle over here to angle H over here. These two angles. Right? So I look at the sides. Oh, this side seems to be the same as that. This one is the same as that. Oh, I can use the converse of the hinge theorem. Right? Those two sides are the same. So the length of the side opposite this angle right, is directly related to the size of the angle. Right? The greater the angle, the longer the, the longer the opposite side. So since this side over here is greater than that side over here, I can conclude that this angle must be greater than this angle over here. Okay, and the last one here. So measure of angle RSQ, RSQ, this angle over here, I want to compare that to TQS, TQS, this angle over here. Okay, so I first look at my uh, sides. So I see that this side, right, is congruent unto itself. That's good. And I see that this side over here is the same as this side over here. So I have the side and this side and the included angle. The side, this side and the included angle. So I can use the hinge theorem. So I want to compare this angle to this angle. So all I have to do is look at the opposite side. Look at the opposite side. And I see that this side is greater than this side. So this angle must be greater than that angle. So TQS is the greater angle. Okay?
Thank you.